Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. The big news for this week is that the Gundam Factory Yokohama will be releasing a 148 scale no great RX-78 F00 Gundam on August the 21st. But don't let the no great fool you. Judging by the promotional images, this thing is going to be better than the similarly scaled Mega Sizes. The articulation and details do seem to be about the same quality, but it's now got LEDs in the head and it's also got fully articulated hands so that it can faithfully replicate the poses of the life-size Gundam. And what I'm the most curious about now is that considering the price, 13,970 yen, around 130 US, is how color accurate is it going to be? If it was part of the Mega Size line, that answer would have been very easy. Not very at all, and it would have had a sticker sheet about as big as a model kit itself. But it is now significantly more expensive, so I would expect them to at least try to match the colors somewhat without the need of that giant sticker sheet. And then the second big model kit announcement was the Real Great Perfect Strike reissue. It was kind of a slow news week. <laughs> and talking about reissues, Tamashi Nation has announced that from November the 19th to November 21st, they will be holding Tamashi Nation Online 2021. More details will be announced at a later date, but they did already show off two special edition Gundam figures that they'll be selling for the occasion. The first one is the Metal Build 10th Anniversary Trans M Riser Full Particle Version for 27,500 yen, around 250 US. Now, I do believe that this is mostly the same one as the one that was released originally in 2011, but with the exception of some cool new beam effect parts and possibly a slightly overhauled color scheme. So, Double O fans, prepare to have your wallet annihilated when this thing ships in November. The second one, then, is the Robot Damashi Side MS Full Armor Gundam Version Anime Real Marking Version for 7,700 yen, around 70 US. And the difference here is kind of self explanatory. It's got realistic markings. And combined with that realistic military feeling color scheme, this is definitely a really good looking figure. Then, during this slow news week, the closed beta for Gundam Evolution went live, and they also got two popular Japanese Twitch streamers aboard Saigia and Shaka. Now, so far, what I've seen from the Gundam Evolution game, I'm liking it. The gameplay looks smooth and a lot of fun, and I also like how it kind of feels like you're actually piloting the mobile suit with that first person view. My only criticism so far is that the mobile suits do move a bit too human-like as opposed to mech-like. Like, I would like it if they added a bit more heft to the movements, like from a visual point of view, that you really get the feeling that they're 18 meter tall mobile suits and not a bunch of dudes cosplaying and then playing airsoft or something. That being said, it's not something that I would need to have changed to enjoy the game. Then on to the stuff we could get this week and on the 7th, Gundam really launched a jet stream attack right at our wallets. Starting with the Gundam Fix Figuration Metal Composite Zaku 2 High Mobility Type R1A Black Tristars version Gundam The Origin version. For a whopping 24,200 yen a piece, like 230 US, this would be quite the blow to the wallet for any Black Tristars fan because, as we all know, you cannot just buy one Black Tristars figure you gotta get the whole set. And of course, with this set, you can replicate all three of them. You've got the extra shoulder shield for Gaia, the giant heat hawk for Ortega, and the anti-ship rifle for MASH. Then, in terms of markings, you get decals so you can mark your machine appropriately. As for me then, I had my eyes on a slightly different black machine, the Robot Damashi Jim Quell. Now, I was too late to pre-order one, 
but I was able to snack one of the last ones Hobbling Japan had in stock. Like after I ordered mine, um, it said that there were only five left. So it was kind of a close call, but I managed. The figure retails for 7,150 yen, which isn't the worst price considering the fact we are also getting a trailer with it. And other accessories include a shield, a gym rifle, a beam saber, and a bunch of hands. Now for that price, I would have appreciated it if they also included the Gym 2's beam rifle, kind of like they did with the Master Grade. Well, the old one. But you can't have everything. Oh, and fun fact, talking about that trailer, um, they mentioned that with that trailer now, you can replicate that scene from when the Jim Quell was introduced in the anime. However, when you play, when you pay close attention to that scene of the anime, especially now with the Blu-ray version, you will see that that isn't actually the Jim Quell that we all know and love. I've been meaning to make a video about that for quite a while now, and well, now that I've said it out loud, I guess I'll just go ahead and make that video next week, so stay tuned for that. Then the final action figure released on that day was the Metal Robot Damashi Gundam Barb's Loops, which I accidentally referred to as the Barb's Loops Rex last week. It went for 11,000 yen, around 100 yen on release, although I fear that you might have to pay a little bit more if you weren't able to secure yours beforehand. But that still wasn't all for the 7th, because the Gundam Factory Yokohama released some limited edition clear gunpla on that day. First up was the 1-100 scale No Great RX-78 F00 Gundam for 3,940 yen, a little under 40 US. And secondly was the 1-144 scale also No Great RX-78 F00 again. Even though they're no grades, they are effectively an RE100 and a 1144 scale high grade, respectively. And well, all I can say is they're clear versions. Then two days later, you could start spending your loose change on Mobile Suit Gundam Gashapon Warrior Forte 14. For 300 yen a spin, you could either get the GPO-1, the GPO-2, the Hazel-2, the Gym Custom, the Gym Quell, or a hangar base with accessories for the GPO-2. Now this looks like a Gashapon machine that I would empty out. A lineup of Gym Quells and Gym Customs on like a hangar base pedestal, and then a few beam rifles and nuclear bazookas thrown into the mix. That sounds like something. I would totally display. In other news then, Advance of Zeta has given us a very interesting look at a machine used by Mars Zeon. The big Zamuru. According to the lore that they provided us, they took the big Zam and then combined it with the concept of the Jamru Fin, which then somehow gave us this transformable thing, which honestly reminds me more of the big row than anything else. Now the idea behind this was a fast, hard hitting hit and run machine. Now I'm assuming that this thing was never mass produced, just like the big Zam, because well, Mars Zion eventually lost. And then also in the same picture, we get to see a cool design for the Endra and a new upgrade for the ship, I believe, the Enpra. And then it's already time to have a look at this week's Gundam Apparel. As with the rest, it's not a lot, but quality over quantity. Because on the 10th, Bankure unveiled their Haman Khan collection, honoring one of the best Gundam waifus around. And for most items, you can choose between a full body silhouette or a bust with a Neo Zeon emblem in a really cool color scheme. Or, you know, don't choose and just get both of the designs. There are two types of t-shirt for 3,300 yen, around 30 US, two types of toad bag for 3,520 yen, also around 30, 35 US, a cushion that has both designs, one on each side, for 3,520 yen, an acrylic stand that combines both designs for 1,760 yen, around 15 US, and a face towel for 3,520 yen that only has the bust design. Mashi Marcello is going to be all over these, isn't he? 
Reservations started on the 10th and everything is slated for a September release. Then if you need some more Xeon stuff, Cospa has your back with their new fleece jackets that are currently scheduled to be released in late October. For 6,380 yen, about 60 US, you can either get a Xeon Attack Force jacket or a Cyclops Squad jacket. Then from the Gundam Cafe online, you can get a Poke mini bottle for 1,760 yen, around 15 US, in nine fancy designs. There's Xeon, Tekadon, Galarhorn, Ryusei Go, Vis Foundation, Zaft, King of Hearts, Zero System, and an SD Shar Zaku, because why not? And if you're like me, you're now probably wondering, what the hell is a Poke? mini bottle. Like my first thought, and I'm pretty sure other people had that same thought, was is Gundam having a collaboration with Pokemon? And in a way it does have to do with Pokemon in the same way that the Poke from Pokemon means the same as the Poke in mini in Poke mini bottle. It stands for pocket mini bottle and they are definitely pocket sized because they only hold 140 milliliters of liquid. And if you're now wondering, what the hell is the point of a bottle that's so small? Well, the website that explained the meaning of the poke to me also gave a few serving suggestions. A strong shot of espresso, Irish coffee, hot mulled wine, a cocktail, chilled wine, or hot miso soup. So basically, coffee, booze, or both. <laughs> and then their last new thing is an RX-78-2 Beam Saber themed folding umbrella for 2,860 yen, around 25 US. And for that price, you're also getting the umbrella bag included. It does look nice for what it is, but I think I'm gonna be waiting for the Jinx Beam Saber inspired umbrella. And then finally, it's been a while since we've had a look at a Gundam.info poll, and at the moment, there is a really interesting one going on. With the release of the fixed figuration Black Tristar Zaku, they want to know who the most popular member of the Black Tristars is. Gaia, Ortega, or Mash. Now, obviously, I think we all know who's going to win this. Gaia is in the lead by a long shot. None of the other two are going to take over, but it is definitely going to be interesting to see who's going to come in second place. Because yesterday when I checked a poll, Ortega was in second place, but at the moment of filming, MASH managed to squeeze past him and grab that second place from him. So if you want to vote in that poll for your favorite Black TriStar member, I will have a link down below. And that is already everything for this week's Gundam news. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.